Well, welcome to the Handman 406. Hey, we're just going to get right into it here. Um, I've got an alternator. This is the one I used to <clears throat> to build the wind generator. So I figure, well, we'll just keep using it. It's a, uh, it's a 12 volt alternator, but uh, we're going to convert it to charge 24 volts. And really, there's not much you got to do to convert an alternator to do that. Other than, um, I'm going to swap out the stator with the 24 volt stator. Um, let's see what do we got here? Shit, fine, I remember what we got. Alright. So, let's see here. So first off, you know, this bearing was bad. We gotta get this out of here first. That wasn't too painful. <clears throat> so anyways, here's your fan. And uh, you know what? Trust me, when I say you're gonna need that thing. I pulled this out of a wind generator that quit working a few years back. This thing's completely burnt up. Yep, that's right. They will burn up a stator. Anyways. Oh yeah. Well, I don't even know what to say. This bearing it was so fried, I guess it welded itself to the shaft and as you can see I beat the living daylights out of this thing and uh anyways that ain't coming off. I'm going to clean that up. I'm going to hit these both with some solder because I'm not getting continuity between these two and I should get a certain amount of ohms. Here. Anyways, no continuity, no continuity. And um, scrape a little bit of... If I can get continuity at those two ends, then I know for a fact it just needs to be re-soldered. Now, I wanted you to see this for yourself. Um, golly, this little wire where it was connected back here, like that, broke. So what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and bring that wire up into here and then connect it. And uh, let's see if we can do that. That will get that puppy working again. Look at there, yeah. What a crazy, what a crazy thing to happen, huh? Yeah. Apparently it's a weakness because uh, this rotor and this rotor suffered the same fate. Now let's get this fixed up here. Oh, no, that'd be this one. There it is. All right, so as soon as we connect this one to this one, we should be all right. I got a little bit of tinning on there, but I just don't feel good about it. There we go. There we go. That's better. I'm gonna twist that turd on there because that's the only way it's gonna really be a good joint. And we could put some heat shrink on there or something. All right, way to go. There it is. And yeah, we got a good connection now. Speaking of heat shrink, couldn't find the heat shrink. I've got some liquid tape here though. Uh, got my hot glue gun. Let's get this turkey plugged in. Get that warming up. Now 
nothing's made right anymore. I'll tell you. Ah, you sucker. There we go. That's what I'm talking about right there. Now, if we could take this, wrap that, <laughs> solder it. Oh man, that's a good connection. What if we go like this? <laughs> and we have a working rotor. Yeah, just my luck. I think I'd rather have heat shrink. Oh boy. What an ugly mess. I think I've been better off going with like silicone. Just smear a little silicone on there. I think I still might. Liquid tape. Yeah. All right, whatever. Black pants, didn't hurt it a bit. And then, oh shit, you son of a bitch. Look at that, look what just happened. And this hot glue is probably not the right thing to use. You know what? Because if this gets warm, it's just going to sling hot glue all over, isn't it? Whatever. I always learn the hard way. Alright, looks like a mess to me. Well, if that fits in there and spins without crashing into everything, I think we're fine. So, let's get on with the rest of this business. How hot is that? Yeah, still hot enough to melt solder. Ow! Well, a couple things I wanted to point out here. This is uh, chiefly the difference in size between these two windings. This is a 24 volt and this is a 12 volt. And I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, but there's definitely more windings in here and they're thinner than the 12 volt model. This is probably gonna be about a 60 to 80 amp alternator. I don't know for sure. This, these are rated at 40 amps. So less amperage, more windings. That means they reach a higher, um, a uh, higher voltage early on. <sighs> now, on these conversions, you're going to need to leave the rectifier in place, and um, the reason being is because you need 12 volt at the source because obviously that's what we're going to be energizing our field current with you can't energize it with ac current and uh so that means we can get rid of this little guy too and uh for lack of a better tool use this funny looking Ow, you son of a... That's impossible. How could something... There we go. It's obviously isolated. And this is some kind of a bridge rectifier for the... Uh, for the uh, self-excitation. Because it just pulls off this three-phase. Makes a small DC current for the brushes here. Alright, speaking of brushes, let's get busy with our... What we're looking for is we're looking for something that comes off the field. That's this right here. And because uh, we're going to be putting positive power to that, we just need to hit this on continuity. As soon as they touch, you got power. You got a beep, I mean. And yeah, this thing broke a long time ago. All right, there we go. So we got. Positive. We've got continuity there. Now let's see if we got continuity here. 
So we're gonna make this the ground. This can come out too. We don't need that. We don't need that crap in there. Ah, oh, whatever. Spend the rest of the day looking for it. Or I could just freaking just take care of it. <clears throat> All right. I don't think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take out that. <clears throat> See what I did there? I just took that out. Cause I know when I put that back in, it's gonna ground out on the case here and it's gonna give me a ground on this one. That's the idea. I don't know. What's going on here? All right, so that's our ground. Our hut. We gotta find out where this goes and how we're gonna get it there. So, we hold this. Oh yeah, baby. Just like that. Now, because when I put my screw back in there, that's gonna ground out to the case again, we're gonna wanna isolate it with one of these babies. And what we really want to do is we want to take this and connect it to that. Let's take that one out since this one's already in. All right. Putting this back in. You're gonna just put the bare wire on the terminal. Always do it clockwise, or at least the direction it tightens in, you see? That way as the nut tightens, the wire becomes tighter. Oh, you son of a... Now, we should be able to put that one back there. Okay. And then we should be able to put this one on the ground. There it is, that's all we need. That's all we need. All right, these alternators can be a little tricky. Now you notice these have got little holes in them. There's a reason for that. There's a little hole back here. You stick, I just got a little Allen key. That's all I'm using here. Um, you stick it up in there like so, you'll notice. See that? That's because need to hold those brushes back while you're when you get that first one in there see that that's in there now where's my other spring and you get that puppy lined up and push it in there where it's supposed to go and then watch this okay see that that's what you want right there Okay, is that the right size? It is the right size. That never happens. Okay. Two. Three. Okay. That's all hooked up. And we don't care about the rest of that junk in there. Careful, you redhead stiff child. And it's free. Now that you got that puppy together, listen closely. Hear that? Should be good. Go like this. It can go like this. And that's gonna leave this positive towards the top of the wind turbine to, uh, to accept that other part of it. All right, different color. about those little things. And there she is, folks. Right there. And we're going to go ground. And we should see some continuity. Of course, it's going to read some ohms, which is normal. We got it. So this baby is right where we want it. 
Yeah, of course there's resistance because they got the windings in there, right? Now, we'll show you how to make one of these blades too. Um, it's essential that you make them like this because otherwise you're just not going to get enough speed. Now, that's a 17 millimeter hole. I would suggest you buy the right size drill bit for it so you can mount your blade. And you know, that's just a little demonstration of how violent things get up there. Um, I think a bolt backed out or something. Um, I wanted to show you these tips, you know, there's some slight erosion on these tips. Um, I'm actually kind of disappointed there's not more. Um, some of my faster wind generator blades would completely get chewed up. And one way of taking care of that, we're going to have to sand these out, reshape our airfoil at the tip. But uh, one way of fixing that is to get some thin CA glue and put a hardened edge on there. That'll help. Um, 